Okay, ladies. Started. Okay. okay. Sankita, shall we start with an introduction? Why are you going? Yeah. Yeah. Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another session of IIW Inspiring Indian Women, where women support each other. We connect. Thank you, Rashmi Ji, for this opportunity. And today we have Kavita, and she's a herbalist, and um, she's going to tell us about herbs and tell us a, a little bit about herself, her journey, and what she does. Um, good evening, Kavita. Welcome on board. And uh, hi, you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, Sangeeta. Hi, Rashmi. Hi, everyone who's on live. And uh, uh, yeah, I think, uh, um, I mean, last year I had COVID. I mean, we had COVID. My husband and I, we were in UK. Uh, in my perspective, I think I have done the biggest uh, change for the sake of herbs, I guess, because we moved back from UK to India to study more of herbs, you know, so that is the biggest step that we've taken in our life. So uh, because uh, the previous year, um, I was uh, helping my dad a lot with herbs and he was in his deathbed. But uh, after giving a lot of herbs, he recovered and the doctors were very surprised. And the hospital refused to believe that he has recovered. His reflexes were so bad. His pneumonia was uh, really bad. He had wheezing. He had every problem and uh, the hospital had given up and... Uh, had asked him to go home, like, you know, they, and they asked them to inform me and I was in UK at that time. So I had to just catch the next flight back and uh, next flight and uh, come to India. And uh, they said, uh, my brother said, they're just waiting for my dad to, you know, uh, that was his last moment sort of like, you know, so I couldn't accept that. So I said, no, I'm going to try something. Now the allopathy has given up. So let me try whatever I can do. Like, so... I should thank my dad because my dad was the first person we really applied everything, whatever I've read all these years, like, you know, two, three years, I've been into this a lot. So I thought, okay, I'll apply. And uh, surprisingly, he was responding within 15 days. He came with a foot pipe from the hospital. He couldn't eat food. So we had to feed him through the foot pipe, uh, everything in a liquid state. But after 15 days, he was having regular food and uh, his pneumonia disappeared and he was walking normally. He was talking normally and his phlegm went off and everything like it was a miracle for us itself like you know so but he survived after that for eight months and then after that uh, last year he passed away so uh, but uh, that was a very good uh, we could really see he was responding to a lot of herbs and it was really difficult for us to so much that the doctors didn't believe that he had to take the foot pipe so they made him in that condition too they made him sit in the hospital go through the entire testing uh, they saw the test results and they were shocked and then they uh, uh, you know said okay fine everything is fine and they sent him back like you know so that was my first uh, uh, sort of uh, strong belief in uh, uh, the concept that the herbs are working like so after my uh, uh, administering all the herbs to my dad I flew back to UK in uh, February where the COVID started 2020 February and I got COVID in March uh, because after the office I went to the office by bus and I got it and then I gave it to my husband also so both of us were sick and alone but luckily I don't know whether God's grace or something I had taken all the herbs back uh, to UK from India. So I didn't have to buy anything in UK. I had everything with me and uh, we just started um, taking them. And that was the initial days. I remember Rashmi, your uh, parliament uh, affair. I mean, we had this meeting in parliament on March 3rd or something. So I yeah. got that March 16th, I got it like, you know, so I was fine you know, even after that, like, you know, so March 16th. So that was a time even when UK could, didn't know that uh, loss of smell and appetite is one of the symptoms for uh, uh, COVID, like, but both of us had it, like, you know, so then we just prayed and we just, uh, you know, we were just uh, alone and we didn't even call anybody. We didn't even take any paracetamol. We just took herbs, like, you know, from morning to night, we were on herbs and it was a miraculous um, thing because I was really uh, suffering because already I had respiratory problems, wheezing and all. So I don't know how I survived through, like, you know, so... So then in July, we decided like, you know, it's enough, like it's nothing. I wanted to do more research on herbs. So I said, okay, let's move back. And both of us got a transfer from our companies back to Bangalore and uh, we are now in Bangalore. So, uh, 
and we've got uh, we are establishing a herbal garden now in the borders of uh, bangalore we've got a uh, land and we are growing a lot of herbs right now so uh, that's it that's my introduction and passion towards herbs oh my god that is amazing kavita i wasn't expecting to hear that yeah um so let's go through the presentation and then uh, we can continue talking and also if people have questions then please drop them in the chat box or later on you can ask questions yourself um, if you prefer right let me share screen okay i think um, you should be able to see my screen now yeah um I will scroll through and you know you can just talk about it or um, you know, yeah. You want to... uh, yeah. yeah before um yeah one more thing is I wrote a uh, published a book last year in Amazon in UK and it was a bestseller on herbs and like you know on the alternative medicine it was a bestseller in US and Australia um, in UK, it was doing fifth or something in sales, but I pulled that down because I had a different uh, thing. So I, it's not available anymore in um, UK. So it's just a small uh, uh, excerpts that I took from them. The point I want to, want to drive through this uh, meeting, and uh, this is my uh, um, uh, my mission. I would say is like you know, uh, I mean. Um, there are there are such simple herbs that are old and uh, generations were practicing in the form of food, in the form of beauty, in the form of day to, everyday day to life. And um, I don't know, it's such a sad thing that we missed everything. And uh, uh, nowadays when I go and research of something and when somebody says something, then my mom says, yeah, we used to do that like when we were kids, like, you know, so like... Uh, Everything is uh, there actually. I don't know how we lost such a treasure and this herbs and um, um, you know all these leaves and spices were also uh, a part of our tradition. I know, and uh, it was so beautifully imbibed in our uh, everyday life, day to day cooking, our lifestyle, and everything. And people were so healthy those days. It's really such a sad thing, like you know. And what is my biggest? Um, uh, uh, fear and my biggest regret is uh, the generation who already knew a lot about these herbs have are no more alive like you know and so we have lost everything with them and um, and the generation people who are in 80s and 90s they are already you know they've forgotten most of them and we need to remind them of that and then they come back with the yeah this happened and all that like you know so almost in 50 years we have lost a tremendous amount of uh, information regarding herbs and uh, surprisingly the west has got a lot of information in fact uh, one of the um, siddha techniques called varmam which where, where acupressure is put the the bible of the book is present in uh, japan uh, museum it is not even with india right now like you know it's such a sad thing like uh, that we lost a lot of information to other countries and so there are a lot of people who are like me who are really very serious crusaders of these herbal and herbal practices but uh, i think we've lost a lot of time and uh, thing so what i am sharing is um, what uh, a, a very little bit of what um, i wanted to share other things i am doing some courses and all that because i really want people to uh, you know at least consider uh, this information and uh, you know uh, start taking things seriously at least start doing the research based on the information that uh, we give and uh, so this is just a gist of uh, what I'm doing online courses and uh, you know what I'm sharing in workshops so I just wanted to tell you about that because there are lakhs and lakhs of herbs it's impossible to share about everything like you know and um, the method I uh, I follow is called the Siddha medicine and um, I have a couple of, uh, I mean, more than, uh, um, I mean, three to four, uh, four doctors uh, who are uh, practicing this. And um, the thing is, when I ask them whether they can teach me, like they said, even if I give 10 lakhs, they're not ready to teach me. <laughs> like, you know, they don't want to spread the information because they say, like, then it gets um, uh, too much out of control and uh, they don't want to do it, like, you know, so... So, you know, just getting to know these sort of people itself is a blessing. So I just leave it to yeah. 
I just respect that decision that they don't want to share it, like, you know. But so, I think, but, yeah, Kavita, isn't that one of the reasons why we're losing all the uh, information because we don't have proper documentation and that sharing of knowledge, um, you know, hasn't happened. Whereas in the West, the, you know, the documentation, the research, it's a bit more scientific um, and it's all you know, uh, documented. So I think it's a great initiative that you have taken and you are sharing the information. Hopefully we'll all share, um, you know, all the listeners out there, um, not, you know, not just use it for yourself, but, you know, share it yeah uh yeah the one of the reasons they are hiding i mean they don't want to spread it out because a uh, few people feel that uh, western people take a lot of information and they make a lot of uh, money out of it and the indians don't benefit out of it they told me that openly and uh, there are other reasons like many people misuse that information and uh, you know they make a lot of money out of it and uh, you know uh, uh, there is no ethics in their practices like you know so that is another reason that they don't want to share so um, i never felt uh, bad about it when they told me like that because i really respected their 15 to 20 years of wisdom and you know they have gone through so much uh, in the non-google days and they have searched for all this information and all that so it is their right uh, that they don't want to share so but uh, any problem or anything i always have access to all these people so till now i didn't feel the pinch so but uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, we can't uh, say some things. I mean, we cannot be, I mean, I feel I just left it. I, because I know the amount of research that goes into this. So I just, uh, because they themselves told like, you know, in YouTube, whatever, uh, we get so many videos and all that. They hardly tell half of the information and these people just believe that and they go and do everything, uh, which is not at all right and all that. So I stopped watching YouTube videos at all. Like, you know, so because I thought, even I thought earlier, like all the information is on YouTube and I can learn from that. But it's really very important you get a proper guru like who really is going on the right uh, path and uh, who can guide you. So I've been lucky in getting um, some of them. So so that's how it's going. So uh, and uh, recently, like, you know, the people call me here and my uh, uh, relatives and friends started calling me doctor because <laughs> uh, I started giving them uh, herbal remedies and they started following it and they are finding a lot of difference, especially after the COVID, like, you know, so um, I mean, I'm really happy because I feel the father of Siddha medicine is somebody called uh, Agastyar, Agatyar we call, and he was, his mission was to come from the north of India to the south of India to spread uh, Siddha medicine in the south. So the, he is my guru in Siddha medicine. So I feel uh, I, it's my mission to spread this word and make uh, people's life a little bit better. Like, you know, I mean, I'm not telling traditional medicine, English medicine is bad, but I'm saying give this also a chance because this is also working. But but when there is an emergency or something, you always have to go to the hospital. But my mission is like, you know, you try and uh, uh, imbibe everything in your daily life. Let's go back to the roots. So that is what I'm trying to say. So that's a disclaimer. Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, Adi Maduram. And uh, one more thing is I always, uh, I mean, in the uh, uh, quest of even searching for information, I also had to go to a lot of uh, gardens and uh, uh, forests and all these places to go and find the uh, herbs in their uh, original forms, not in the forms of powder that is sold in Amazon or something. Because I know how much of adulteration is happening in everything, even in, uh, you know, a simple example is, uh, I don't know how many of you all have heard of vetiver. Have you heard of vetiver? Anybody's heard of vetiver? It is called vetiver only in English too. Have you heard Rashmi Sangeeta? No, I haven't. Okay. So that is uh, used in perfumes in France. When we went to France, uh, me and my husband, and we went to this uh, perfume making industry and where we were shocked to see the vetiver uh, uh, displayed carefully in a lace, uh, wrapped in a lace. And it was uh, 
uh, it was in a showcase like you know and i was like uh, so shocked because we don't even value that in back in our villages it grows in the fields because it needs a lot of water it avoids the soil erosion and all that but it is filled the roots are filled with so much of medicinal value like if you put it in the water to drink or something it has got so much of micronutrients which seeps into the water in a mud pot or something like you know so when people say vetiver immediately they go to amazon and all that and they buy uh, vetiver and all that but i start learning that uh, the vetiver comes to the market only after oil the oil has been extracted for perfumes so in men's perfume vetiver oil is a very key ingredient it has got a very earthy dusky woody uh, uh, fragrance which uh, really a lot of big brands also use that if you see the Uh, men's perfume you can see the one of the ingredient as vetiver oil like you know so so it's not like uh, so what i feel is even when you say herbs when you when you use herbs it's better you use an authentic original one because we are in this field now doing a lot of research i can really even i uh, cannot identify uh, vetiver with with the essential oil extracted and without the essential oil extractor we just go by the uh, you know ethical values of the source or the person who is selling it like you know who's growing it actually like you know so yeah. Yeah, that's yeah that sounds really interesting kavita and i think maybe that is the reason why we have lost uh, you know all yeah. this yeah. knowledge because what you buy is not the pure one it doesn't work But and, and you use faith in it. True, true, true. Yeah, mm-hmm. true. And this itself is a big journey identifying sources and suppliers, and yeah. you know, finding out that itself is another big journey. So anyway, I'm, we are very happy that we are back here and we have all the luxury to go through, meet all these people and all that. So I wanted uh, to spread authentic information, and in which most of the things that we are using, or it comes through my friends or relatives or very close friends using only those information. I feel like sharing. Not every. uh thing because i like to experience um, certain things and then tell the people like you know so because i know it works like so uh, i wish i can uh, show a um, video of the garden but i will put it in a channel which just uh, growing all the herbs are just growing so it needs some more time maybe another two months or so i think all the herbs will be up so i will share that later so yeah this is adimadram in tamil but um, i think it is muleti in um, hindi i think uh, you get a powder also of this this is very good for cough like you know you just take the root when i was in uk we um i had severe cough after the covid and uh, we didn't get the uh, root but we got the lozenges type of uh, adimadram but that itself helped um so you just buy the root and uh, just keep uh, you know take a small piece of root and keep sucking the whole day and the uh cough will come down like you know you'll be surprised uh the recent experiences my friend uh, she was uh, she had covid 3 months ago and she was okay and after a month and she was very happy she was going to the office and uh, 20 days ago again she was admitted again in the hospital because there was still a part of uh, lung infected they found it uh, after the ct scan and she's been coughing really bad and uh, allopathy medicines didn't help her so she called me and i like four days ago i told her about this and she immediately ordered and uh, she started chewing and she said uh, the cough frequency has come down so much and she is able to sleep uh, peacefully now like you know so that is the latest experience uh, i have like in adi madram so um, it's good to have this at home um, yeah can you go to the next slide uh, yeah the neem um, Uh, sticks yeah many of us just uh, cringe or uh, you know don't believe this or something again when i was in uk 5 years ago i mean 3 years ago i had a severe toothache and when i went to the doctor there in emergency he just uh, uh, said uh, that in another 5 uh, years all my teeth is going to fall off and uh, <laughs> it is in such bad my nerves and all are weak and my gums and all are very weak and all that i think that was 5 years ago but i'm just waiting now it is five fifth year but i'm just waiting for it all to fall off but uh, as soon as i came here i switched over to this uh, neem sticks powder and neem leaf powder and we make our own tooth powder at home herbal tooth powder which of course it's very messy uh, to clean and 
to to clean the wash basin or whatever it is something but i feel it's much better than losing your tooth to the chemicals and also ingesting some of the chemicals uh, the kids and the adults ingesting chemicals also so it is better than uh, that i feel it's okay i can uh, clean the bathroom or wash basin after my uh, uh, you know brushing my teeth so it's okay but uh, i can see a lot of difference in my gums and it's, it doesn't bleed anymore and all that so i wanted to share information about that so okay. so we use we use only our uh, you know our tooth powder like you know the one that i make with all the herbs and everything yeah what about the neem toothpaste that we get in shops no like no no toothpaste no tooth powder you can buy it from the shop which doesn't have chemicals you will be okay. alarmed yeah last uh, two weeks ago i prepare i mean we prepare our own hair pack for uh, thing because in uk i lost a lot of hair so i had to rush back and do that also here so i do my own hair pack which is also natural uh, darkener it doesn't dark too much you cannot expect like the dye ones chemical dye ones but oh, you know for after every wash it's a bit dark and all that but i'm very happy because it's all herbs that i'm preparing and and uh, so one of the dealers uh, one of the person who's selling all this he said he's got a very good uh, hair pack uh, combination and all that he said why you are going through all this trouble of making your own herbs i will send it and all that so i asked him to list out the ingredients and he listed out and everything seemed okay i said okay fine you send me the sample then after when i came i when i opened the sample i am seeing the last ingredient of the uh, uh, organic they claim it as organic natural hair pack and all that But the last uh, ingredient said the SLS powder, which is sodium lauryl sulfate, uh, which uh, which is added to give a lot of uh, you know froth and foamy and all. But it is very bad to sulfate. You can read about sulfate in Google, like you know. So, so I then I told him no, I don't want. I will make my own again, like you know. So, so you have to be really very very careful. It's not like. Uh, you know completely organic or natural in fact my cousin yesterday she was sharing she had a she had hair till her <laughs> till her waist and the one of the persons or her friend or somebody i don't know i don't know i was like alarmed when i i was just looking at her and i was seeing her what is she talking like you know she's here in, in fact in my house now she had cut her hair till shoulder length i was asking her like how come you cut your hair uh, till your shoulder length you love your hair and all that she said her, one of her friend or she gave her uh, oil and told her don't Uh, you know, apply this oil and not more than one hour you should keep it don't keep it more than one hour apply it and wash it off your hair fall will stop because she had covid you won't believe all the hair stuck together and nobody could open the hair out she oh, had to cut <laughs> oh my god that's a disaster seriously i couldn't believe it i was just looking at her and i asked her, how can you just go and trust and apply some stupid oil on your no you only told me all natural things are good and she told me it's natural so i just bought it like oh my god i just couldn't believe it like you know and she's got she had such a lovely wavy hair till waist and now she's got a little shoulder length like you know we after that we were all just laughing because i couldn't believe how people go and just believe everything just because it's natural like you know well, well, what can we do kavita we are trying to avoid chemicals so we look for labels that say they are you know natural yeah that's what i said i told her natural oil if you use even after one week if you don't wash it will be looking so good on your hair how can something turn so that disastrous after and and i asked her daughter her daughter said even i applied at there but uh, i i managed i said how i kept an alarm for one hour and before one hour i walked <laughs> i said this is not to talk i said please just because it's not i said no natural things can harm you like you know they have added something to this like so this every day i hear stories about like all these okay, things okay so be one <laughs> ladies um, if, if there is an oil that you meant to keep for one hour and wash that a just don't use it Um, yeah be yeah. if you've already put it on just go now and wash it <laughs> okay yeah. let's move on uh, your next product is uh, yeah yeah kadakai uh, kadakai okay. this um uh, this is one of the trifala uh thing but i i don't buy the trifala powder i buy this kadkai and uh, for this uh, you have to take the outer shell and the inner shell is poisonous i mean inner uh, seed is poisonous so you have to remove the inner seed and uh, 
uh, use outer shell, uh, pound it and then uh, filter it and then use it. It's very good for uh, constipation. And um, so my dad used to have my mom, everybody who has got problems, um, constipation problems, if they take it in the night after uh, all the food, dinner and everything, if they just take a half a spoon or a quarter spoon for 10 to 15 days, uh, they would really find a lot of relief. So this is a natural uh, uh, laxative sort of like so. Uh, so uh, the reason I'm telling a story behind uh, each thing is that's the reason I made the content very small because I had a lot of things to share real time experiences only then people will understand how serious it is like you know so uh, this Kadakai when I was talking about this Kadakai to my mom then she said uh, in Tamil we have a, um, a saying which says in the morning if you have ginger and in the uh, afternoon if you have uh, dry ginger powder morning if you have fresh ginger powder I mean fresh ginger juice and afternoon if you have uh, dry ginger powder uh, decoction or something uh, you know you mix it in the water and thing and in the night if you have kadakai powder um, even a 90 year old uh, person can walk uh, you know uh, briskly and uh, without any support or something so this is oh. a yeah, this is the meaning of that uh, proverb, but it is in a beautifully rhythmic way. It is written in Tamil, like, you know, so uh, this is what is written by older generations in our literature, like, you know, so it is that effective. And um, yeah, when I was telling mom about this, uh, she said uh, she grew up in Burma. She was born and brought up in Burma. So she said in Burma, they soak the kadakai in honey and they sell every day morning the the guy comes or the vendor comes to all the houses so they used to have every day one one kadakai so i was telling my mom you spoiled 50 years of my life by not telling this if you had told me earlier i would have lived much much healthier life touch uh, touch gold i'll tell you my mom is 75 years old the strength and energy she has got at this age i can't even say i don't have even quarter of it like you know but i feel all that is because of this kadakai she had in all those years when she grew up yeah that's true kavita i think even when i compare myself with my parents i feel what they are in their 80s i'm in my 40s so yeah. i think it's because you know we've been having all these yeah, uh, yeah. ready-made things and you know polluted stuff yeah um, true. okay yeah. that's uh, great shall we move to the next slide yeah okay. uh, this is a uh, Karsalankani, we say this, there is a yellow and uh, white in this. Yellow is supposed to be very good. The yellow leaf, the yellow flowers, uh, leaves, uh, uh, there is white also. There is another saint uh, who claims that this is one of the king of um, uh, the herbs. Uh, uh, Karsalankani is, uh, I think, Bringraj, I think, in Hindi. Uh, so you must have heard about it. Like, you know, they make decoctions and all that, but uh, we use it for uh, hair care uh, uh, preparations and they also use uh, decoctions to uh, drink they say it uh, um, yeah it improves the immunity and all that but I haven't had karsalankani because I'm not able to get the plant there are so much or so many plants but um, it is very difficult to identify the right variety because uh, herbs if you're not careful you can always uh, consume something else like you know so for the risk of it because they say in the market uh, the guy said there is a lot of duplicate ones which are sold so i'm still searching for the original one so but it is a very very powerful herb um yeah the next one that's interesting yeah okay before you talk about this i know it's a messy thing <laughs> the soap nuts yes i mean you know i think we've all used it right as, i mean as kids it was a bit more of a regular thing yeah, um, uh, the soap nuts, uh, one of the farmer uh, that uh, we buy um, uh, things from, he said, uh, he he shared a very interesting story. And uh, those days, I don't know if you all have done it, we have done in our villages. My aunt's house, the uh, village, uh, the, wa the water that we uh, cook and the water that we bathe in goes to the plants, it's fed to the plants. Like, you know, it does, that's just a small valley sort of which, uh, path which goes and uh, it uh, runs, the water runs to the plants directly. Like, 
So this guy also had uh, his uh, uh, banana plant in the backyard and uh, he fed his washing machine water into it. Like, you know, the banana never grew and it was stunted. And then he was wondering because he uh, does organic farming and all that. So he was wondering why this banana is not growing and he's not giving any chemicals, but he never realized that the water from the washing machine was, uh, you know, it was not fed, but the extra water or something, it was leaking and it was going into that like. Then he realized that and then he changed uh, the soap nuts uh, solution. He fed it even into the washing machine. He used the soap nut solution for the washing clothes. And miraculously, he says, you after using within 15 days, the tree started growing like anything and yielding fruits like, you know, so... It makes the hair very dry if you don't use it in the right proportion. This they use it because they want to have it in a foamy effect in something. But uh, if you don't use it in the right quantity, it makes the hair very dry. But it really yeah. cleans, squeaky clean. Yeah. I guess yeah. You need to know how to you know how to use it properly as well. Yeah. Uh, the hibiscus and uh, hibiscus powder and leaves. Uh, this is the powder that I, the, the photos are all, pictures are all taken in UK. This is the powder. I bought it in uh, uh, UK Amazon. I was surprised by the color of the hibiscus powder and I thought it was such a lovely pink. And uh, when I came to India and I myself plucked hibiscus flowers, I dried it and I ground it. It didn't have this pink color like it. So I'm wondering what I got in Amazon in UK, like, you know, so it's very surprising even there. I don't know what they are doing. So the because usually in the products which are sold in, uh, um, which is, which is, which claims all these health things and all that, usually they are certified, but I don't know how this color had come. So it was really surprising, but um, uh, it's a very na a natural uh, conditioner, like, you know, so those days people used to use this a lot on their hair, like, you know, powder and leaves. Like, so uh, you don't need shampoos. I, I'm a very big, big believer in uh, protecting the water bodies first. I think if you protect the water body first, everything will fall in place. So my baths are very guilt-free baths. I don't have any chemicals. I use the soap that I make and uh, that which is full of herbs and all these natural things. So um, in my family, it's almost some five years since we used chemical soaps or shampoos or anything, even for the dishwash, everything I make on my, on my own, even when I was in UK. So almost five years, at least I have a feeling of not uh, spoiling the environment with the water because the water is then fed to the plants and then again, it comes to the, comes to you on the table, then it's a cycle. So uh, yeah, I think it's a very important point, Kavita. Um, yeah. I just hope that, you know, uh, this becomes more the norm rather than the chemicals. Yeah. Um, I think I, it's a vicious I, cycle. Yeah. And I know, um, I know it's very, very hard to give up on this convenient thing. Just open a shampoo bottle and just uh, squeak, uh, you know, uh, squeeze some little shampoo and this <clears throat> apply on the hair and go. But then at what cost? Even you're spoiling your health. I did a cosmetology course in uh, UK uh, just to understand all these things. And I was alarmed to see like, you know, how much uh, the um, chemicals go through our body, through our skin also. Like, you know, so the, whatever you put on your scalp and your body it's again absorbed by the blood like you know so we are uh, giving chemicals in whatever possible ways we can like you know by eating chemical food by putting chemicals on our hair on our skin all these makeup items my god i was alarmed when i uh, did the course on this uh, cosmetic uh, products uh, making thing because I wanted to see if something was natural let me go and do that but I had my own company also there but I couldn't uh, keep up with the cost of making it because the raw materials that I wanted to use was very expensive so I just closed it and I, I thought okay I'll do something here because at least I know what is the origin of it like you know so um, uh, it is very different. Sometimes you're so tempted to just pick up a paste or something to brush it, but then you have to really fight that and, uh, you know, do it like so I don't know how many people really have that uh, energy or the time or the willingness to do that and they just fall prey to the convenience and they just squeeze a, a shampoo bottle. If you come and uh, come to my house, you will not find a single plastic item in my bathrooms or anything or any no cleaners, no home cleaners, no shampoo bottles, nothing. I don't do anything for the landfill. I see to that. 
except for the milk cover which we are working on that also like you know except for that we don't have anything plastics going out from my house for the to the landfill like you know yeah. it is a really a big big um, effort i would say i don't know how many people will really be doing that but i would say everybody has to do that not even if not for them they have to do it for their children because yeah, but, children... Um, yeah kavita like you said finding the ingredients <clears throat> is the problem right so how are we going to overcome that I mean, if you can't find the ingredients then no see how... once uh, the reason is like you know because people expect a cheaper cost uh, when they buy the ingredients so automatically these guys also mix everything and give. once you put a, a word that you don't mind paying for an uh, um, premium you don't mind paying premium for a good organic ingredient i think they are not going to do that because i've spoken with so many people and uh, they are very ethically uh, doing only the middlemen they uh, they are into the packaging and all that who add all all these things and they put their margin because people expect uh, uh, cheap products i mean cheaply priced products so if, if they can't uh, because now we are growing organic i understand the cost of growing an organic thing because we have to do everything organically uh, the uh, pest control or everything we have to uh, do it organic there is so much of time and effort and raw materials cost which goes into that and which we have to price it in our products but then if the general public is not willing to pay for that so automatically some of the people will just uh, you know mix something and they just sell it off so that is another thing i think it's a mindset change that you you have to say like you know i have to pay this much of money if i want a really good stuff so uh, this happened in uh, since you know uh, uh, rashmi that i also make gold and silver jewelry so one of when we were talking uh, about the, the one of the jeweler was telling because people want cheap jewelry we are mixing a lot of alloy into that it's the same thing yeah so yeah so this um nannari they said this is a syrup which we get again in our uh, tamil nadu we get i don't know about other states it's also called karasara pilla something which is again a water purifier uh, one interesting article that i read was even though all these actors actresses and everybody are uh, uh, eating i don't know if it's true or not but uh, it did give me a, a food for thought Uh, uh though they are eating the best organic food and everything like how come many are getting cancer and all these things because everybody drinks bottled water um uh, 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 earlier days in our villages we used to have mud pots where we used to put this uh, nanari that vetiver that i spoke of all these things which brought so, so much of micronutrients into it like you know so maybe that uh, water is also very very water is very very important but maybe because we stopped consuming all this uh, nutrient added water maybe that is also having an effect on us because we go for this bottled water everywhere so yeah this is my um, uh a thing a uh, small very very small peek into what i do um any questions so uh, the last slide it says you run online courses yeah i'm just okay. preparing the content and all that for food uh, the herbs that can be incorporated as a food as a daily routine or into your beauty thing or whatever is beauty means i mean i of course we cannot compete with the cosmetic industry what they give is totally different but the basics okay so we look forward to um, hearing about your online courses once they are sure. ready yeah um Uh, I don't know if you want to share your number. Yeah, I've already given my number. In there. Yeah, so um, you know, for our Facebook users yeah. who can't see this, should I just read it out loud? Sure, no problem. So this is Kavita Balakrishnan's uh, India number. It's not the UK. It's India number. It's six three eight five four five six double nine eight. Yeah, it's six three eight five four five six double nine eight, and Kavita is in India. um yeah. okay let me stop sharing the screen and i will check if there's any questions um okay i don't see anything in the comments um we'll just give it a few more minutes in case people have questions and you know they come up uh, but um that was a very interesting um talk kavita thank you so much for sharing all that and like you pointed out you know we are in that you know catch 22 situation uh, yeah. we know that we want to use authentic organic products but just obtaining them 
and making it part of our everyday routine is is not easy. For example, I've been looking for something natural for my hair. Mm-hmm. I think everyone who comes to London, you know, loses a lot of hair. Yeah. And yeah, and I haven't really found you know anything that is good. I've now switched to because one of my friends, it's a it's a men's product. It's it's called Bulldog, but apparently it's all natural. Um, mm-hmm. So I said, okay, I don't mind if it's a men's product. I will use it. Yeah, so I have bought that. Yeah. Um, so you know, hopefully things will change, and people like you uh, who are spreading this information, we're going to hopefully pick up, and uh, it will become the normal. And when you go to shops, you know, this is what we need to see, and not all the chemicals. Yeah, the trend um, is, is changing. Yeah, the trend has changed a lot after COVID because there is a big surge in uh, herbal products. At least I can talk for Tamil Nadu because half of the items that I order, it's not available when I go to the shop itself. Like, you know, so they say it immediately gets sold out. Like, you know, so there is a big surge, but there is a lot of time yet. I mean, and uh, maybe it'll take another five to 10 years to really fight this uh, uh, thing but uh, I I always say I would tell my husband I think the COVID has come up uh, COVID came into existence only because God wanted this herbs to resurface again and bring all the goodness about it like you know so uh, yep. we have a question here yeah. uh, what is the one herb you would recommend if you contract COVID yeah one thing that we've been very very um, uh, confident about and still i even now uh, today we have uh, we uh, the fresh turmeric bulb uh, not the dried turmeric powder but the fresh turmeric bulb i was surprised to see a lot in the indian stores in uk it is very very important you take that uh, at least an inch of it with uh, some four to five peppercorns full peppercorns uh, that is one thing even today i tell my husband that is the only thing which is saving us till now like because after seeing my friend and all contact uh, having after covid symptoms like this respiratory and all that touch gold till after one and a half years till uh, we got COVID, like, uh, you know, we are just sailing through and that too for our age, like, you know, both of us are in our, in our 50 and, you know, uh, we are just going um, smooth without any medications or anything. But that thing is very, very um, key in our diet after, before going to sleep, we definitely have the raw turmeric bulb with the uh, peppercorns a lot of people say we have it with milk and we have we drink this powder and all these things but i feel there are certain food the curcumin content in the turmeric in fresh turmeric is very very high and it is supposed to accelerate uh, the goodness of it when you take it with the peppercorns so So are you meant to boil it kavita sorry so are you meant to boil it and then drink no 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 just fresh fresh pepper fresh turmeric bulb and uh, with five peppercorns. Oh, okay. Term. I, I yeah. think that, that could be a bit difficult to... No, no, no. It's not at all like what people think. It's very, very bland. Actually, it, the, only the peppercorns make it spicy. But yeah. I think it's 100 times much better than taking any medicines, I would say. Really? Okay, that, that's a great tip. So I'll just repeat it. Uh, one inch fresh turmeric bulb and four to five peppercorns. And you're just meant to chew it. Um, yeah. Is that before yeah. bedtime? Yeah. After so after your, dinner, before bed. Yeah, after, after all your meals and bedtime, and it will also protect your teeth also. Excellent. That's a great tip. Um, so is uh, Gokru or Goshira and Amla recommended for COVID? Specifically for is- helping regain sense of smell. Uh, we had all this, as I said, when we had COVID in UK, I, we had a turmeric, fresh turmeric bulb, we had uh, uh, amla, we had ginger juice, we had kadakai, everything we had. I think it's rich in vitamin C. So always uh, that has been part of our diet olden days. Like, you know, we used to have rasam in South India in Tamil Nadu, we used to have rasam out of uh, amla, like, you know, because it's an everyday thing. Like we have used to have it in different forms. So I don't think there is no, uh, there is a harm in uh, eating that I and there is also a story where one of the king ha, got one of these and he wanted to give it to a poetess so, and uh, there was only one of it and the poetess said like why do you want to give it to me you you can eat it because you are a good king I want you to live for a long time and uh, he said no you're uh, uh, you should be living for a long time and you should write a lot of Tamil poems and it should reach a lot of people so you should have it so symbolically through stories they said that if you eat the Tamil you live for a long time yeah yeah i think amla has a 
you know, it's very high in vitamin C. Yeah. Um, but uh, I can't eat amla. It's no. just, you know, my teeth just go. <laughs> no, with a little bit salt, you can eat it. Like, you know, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I have a friend who will just, just munch them like anything. Like, you yeah. know, when we have the amla season, you yeah. just eat them like mangoes. And for me, just one no, bite and I, I can't. No, you can, you can always soak it in honey or you can always yeah, make yeah. a pickle and eat it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, right. that I can manage. Yes. Yeah. But uh, raw fruit, I just cannot eat it. Yeah. I don't have the teeth. Okay, any more questions, anyone? Just give it a couple of minutes. So what's next, Kavita? So you're preparing these online uh, yeah. courses, which we yeah. look forward to hearing about. Yeah. yeah. Um, and is there anything else you would like to share? Oh, uh, no, nothing else for right now. I think uh, I, I also want to do um, a session on sustainable living, like, you know, like go natural. And like, I just want to share what all practices I do to the, I mean, because a lot of people feel like where to start or something like, you know, so I just want to share my uh, a way of living like where we really are benefiting a lot and also the environment is benefiting like you know so that will be one of the session maybe the next time or something okay that's brilliant yeah we would love to hear all about it and you know change our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, living for yeah. better health uh, yeah. cleaner better healthier organic good for the planet good for yeah. us for the children yes absolutely Right, since um, there's no more questions, we can wrap it up. Thank you once again, Rashmi ji. Thank you to all of you who are here. And thank you so much, Kavita, for sharing this uh, amazing knowledge. Thank you. Thank you, Sangeeta. Thank you, Rashmi. See you then. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you so much, Kavita and Sangeeta. Thank you so much for chipping in in last minute. Yeah, and yeah. Kavita, you yeah. are really... Uh, world full of gems you know <laughs> and it's not hand full it's world full of gems that so, that name you really didn't forget right it's so special. of course I not i should, I should uh, go and trademark it i guess yes of course uh, so to tell everybody that kavita is a blogger and she has her own facebook group which is called handful of gems and anybody can join it because she keeps on sharing her gems of knowledge of gems i should say knowledge of gems into the in that uh, forum so kavita thank you so much again okay to, uh, tomorrow is raksha bandhan so i think if somebody can sing sangeeta anything for raksha bandhan <laughs> don't ask me to sing ask me to paint i'll paint <laughs> but if i sing uh, 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 so a uh, uh, lot of lot of happy wishes to everybody from inspiring indian women all the sisters out there and all the brothers out there uh, the bond should grow stronger and stronger and uh, we hope to see lots of lovely rakhi uh, photographs on our group you know keep on sharing sisters the bond of your brother and also you can sing songs live videos post it on inspiring indian women uh, i think the the muhurat is according to india time it's i, I think morning eight o'clock it should get over it seems so 8 a.m so it starts in midnight 12 to morning 8 a.m but i don't know how to calculate it for uk but never mind uh, so we will give a break tomorrow because we want you all to enjoy yourself with your family with your brothers with your lovely people go out teach your children the tradition of rakhi and uh, we will get back again on 26th of this month with a sari launch so hina parik is going to launch her sari business on inspiring indian women and the host is our very own babita agarwal so with that note and we hope to bring back kavita again very soon with something else right kavita yeah some other topic <laughs> yeah yeah sure We'll do yeah. the pottery one, yeah. Oh, pottery one. We need to see that wheel of yours when yeah. you make your pottery. Oh, yeah. that we have to go to your studio, Kavita. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I have it in my home. <laughs> my home is my studio. <laughs> in Bangalore, right? Yeah, Bangalore, yeah. Okay. And, so, uh, do uh, correct your Rush, camera. Sure, for sure. That. Oh, my God. No, Rashmi, sure. you'll have to send me to Bangalore for this one. <laughs> I will yeah. go and do the live interview. <laughs> to touch that mud, you know, to touch that mud, which is... Absolutely, I would love to do that. Oh my God, it's so soothing, it's so soothing. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah.
Okay, take care, okay, everybody. Take care, all of you. Thank, Thank you, Rajna. Thank you so much. Bye, Sangeeta. Bye, Sangeeta. Bye, 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 bye. 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 bye.